The Uganda State of Oil and Gas Sector feature is brought to you by Accord in partnership with Cisco, NTV with support from DGF. The policy goal of Uganda's oil and gas sector is to use the country's oil and gas resources to contribute to early achievement of poverty eradication and create lasting value to society. However, this lofty dream can only be achieved if Uganda is able to collect all the due revenues from oil production. But there are fears that if a country does not put in place robust systems to combat illicit financial flows, Uganda could lose astronomical sums of money to a sophisticated wave. The issue of recoverable costs is an area where we believe if a government, especially the Petroleum Authority, uh, Ministry of Energy and the Office of the Auditor General, of course, as uh, the ones who are scrutinizing this, don't pay due attention to how uh, the production sharing agreement is being implemented, especially in respect to uh, recoverable costs, there is a risk for illicit financial flows. It is estimated that between 1980 and 2018, Sub-Saharan Africa received nearly $2 trillion US dollars in foreign direct investments and official development assistance, ODA. It emitted over a $1 trillion US dollars in illicit financial flows. Uganda has been under the spotlight of its gold resources being vested with incidents of illicit financial flows. Mostly illicit financial flows are, are transacted by uh, uh, multinational, multinational enterprises. So the first one we have um, is in the company's law, where now we are supposed to disclose a beneficial owner. Because if money is being moved, there have been usually a lot of things that money gets moved to, uh, intra, um, to jurisdictions that are non-transparent. They will pick this, uh, whatever. And we don't know who the owner is. But now, in the company's law, you are supposed to disclose all the people who are supposed to benefit from these transactions. Is that one. Two, the financial, the anti-money laundering legislation also has disclosure requirements. According to an audit report for the financial year 2016-2017, Uganda lost a staggering 16.95 million US dollars or about 65 billion Uganda shillings in undeclared royalties in the exportation and importation of gold in 2016 and 2017. We, we first of all have developed capacity. Uh, in 2013 when we uh, began uh, building our capacity, we had only one officer with a postgraduate training in oil and gas as a sector. As we speak now, we have over 13 officers with postgraduate qualifications in economics, in oil and gas accounting, in environmental studies, in law. And so all these uh, uh, efforts aimed at ensuring that we plug those gaps, the analysis of related party transactions. We know that uh, these companies, most of them, are headquartered elsewhere, but they have operations in Uganda, and they have also operations in different countries. So you want to make sure that these transactions are at arm's length. It is a public secret that oil companies world over often use various schemes to arrange their affairs in such a way that they maximize profits, sometimes at the expense of the host country. To achieve this, companies use tax avoidance, incorporation in tax havens, transfer pricing, and declaring inflating the recoverable costs and benefiting from double tax agreements to cheat. Most of these forms of illicit financial flows are at the behest of multinational firms, many of them domiciled in safe havens and secrecy jurisdictions. I would say it's largely not a very old uh, uh, experience that we have as a country because we are relatively new to oil and gas, despite the fact that we discovered our oil about 20 years ago and we've all along been trying to put up the capacity that we need. But in terms of practicing what we know in terms of knowledge, to be able to scrutinize budgets and to be able to have the right uh, frameworks, it still be considered to be new. So in that way, it leaves us a bit hanging. But also when you look at the kind of institutions that are put in place to be able to help us uh, guard against or curb uh, illicit financial flows. These are not institutions you would say that uh, are properly resourced in terms of technology, in terms of uh, financial resources, in terms of the human resource. So it really requires uh, 
fully fledged robust systems that can help us be able to detect but also to curb. Uganda recently ratified the Extractives Industry Transparency Initiative to dispel concerns of secrecy and the meaning of anticipated petrodollars. It allows for multi-stakeholder oversight in the disclosure of contracts, beneficial owners, revenues and payments. With, with this multilateral um, agreement, we are able to share this information, this sharing of information among jurisdictions. And actually also in the anti-money laundering law, there's been a provision for sharing of information with all um, jurisdictions where, which, are pa which are party to the anti-money laundering uh, legislation. So we, we, we see in that way that uh, we are fighting it. Of course, um, sometimes people are one step ahead of us. But fears are abounding that the oil and gas sector remains vulnerable to these schemes. A number of institutions and systems to combat illicit financial flows have been put in place. But does the country have a competent human resource to surmount this vice? The second one, as you mentioned, a uh, double taxation agreement. Uh, governments enter into arrangements with other governments in order to avoid companies or individuals from uh, countries being taxed in the country where they're making money and the country where they come from. Uganda happens to have uh, a number of uh, double taxation agreements with some uh, well-known tax havens and one of these is the Netherlands through which we've seen most companies actually that have come to Uganda's oil and gas sector are coming through uh, first register in the Netherlands and they, they come to Uganda so that they benefit from the uh, convenient uh, double taxation terms. To combat illicit financial flows Three initiatives, the Financial Action Task Force, the Global Forum on Transparency and Exchange of Information for Tax Purposes and the Inclusive Framework on Base Erosion and Profit Shifting have provided strong recommendations and standards for reducing illicit financial flows. Uganda has a number of graft fighting agencies, but to combat illicit financial flows, which is a more complex form of crime, it will require a new breed of coders with skills and ethics to protect the country's petrodollars. The Uganda State of Oil and Gas Sector feature is brought to you by Accord in partnership with Cisco, NTV with support from DGF.